Welcome to another weekly family meditation on tending the garden of our hearts. Usually, this podcast is only an audio recording, but this week we're expanding to a full virtual Sunday school lesson. Welcome. I'm Elisa Bielitich. And I'm Christina Wanger. This podcast is always intended for the whole family, so please gather everyone around. This week, we have a special episode for you, as the entire world takes a little break and spends some time at home. Since we're all watching the Divine Liturgy online, we thought it would make sense to hold Sunday School online, too. After you watch this video, check out the rest of our page because we have lots of ideas for conversations, crafts, and activities that you and your family can do today. We also have some other videos that you might enjoy. This week opens with the Sunday of the Ladder, which celebrates St. John Climacus, whose name means of the ladder because he wrote the very famous Ladder of Divine Ascent. The ladder is all about how to live the life of an ascetic, to pray, fast, and give alms in order to climb the ladder toward heaven. St. John was a very smart and well-educated man who you might have thought would decide to become a great teacher. Instead, he really wanted to serve God with his whole heart by becoming a monk. Now, there's a very old monastery on Mount Sinai. You might recall that God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Up high on that mountain, Moses would spend days with God, learning from him and growing to understand him. You can easily imagine why this would be a good place for a monastery. Like many other monks, John wanted to go to the top of Mount Sinai and spend time in prayer, encountering God like Moses did. John lived there in the monastery for a long time, and he became really wonderful at fasting and praying, and he grew holier and holier and learned more and more about God. After several years, he decided to go out into the desert to live alone as a hermit. In the desert, John was tempted again and again by the devil, but he put his trust in Jesus Christ and just fasted and prayed more and more. The more temptation he faced, the more he prayed and fasted. And it worked. The devil was trying to pull him away from God, but instead all of those temptations became a reason to fast more, to pray more, and to grow closer to God. Because John responded to everything with prayer and fasting, he grew very holy. And soon the other monks saw it and they began to come to him for advice. He was so well respected that he became the abbot of the monastery on Mount Sinai. He was a wonderful leader to all of the monks and the hermits there, and they benefited from his wisdom. They asked him to write down everything he had learned in the desert about fighting temptation and growing closer to God. So he did, and he wrote a book called The Ladder of Divine Ascent. Now, just like Moses, John went up Mount Sinai and spent time with God. Moses climbed a mountain, and so did John. They were ascending, rising up to spiritual heights. And also like Moses, who came down the mountain to deliver the Ten Commandments, God's rules for living, John delivered a book of rules for monastic life. Moses offered the Ten Commandments to the people of God, and John offered the 30 steps of the ladder to the monks and the hermits. Both the Ten Commandments and the ladder are really rules for living in a way that brings you closer to God. As we look at today's gospel reading, let's remember St. John and his ladder, because he teaches us there to turn toward God, to repent our sins, and most importantly, to pray and fast, so that we can be filled with everlasting life and grow closer to God. The reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. And one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? 
and he said, from childhood, and often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Just as St. John was being tempted by the devil because the powers of evil wanted to destroy his holy path toward God, this man's child has a bad spirit in him that wants to destroy him, to throw him into a fire and hurt him. In both cases, the answer is to turn to Christ. Now, there's a retired priest named Father Dan Suchu who is very holy and wise, and he has suggested that whenever we see a story in the Bible about a parent who brings his child to Christ for healing, we should stop and think about this. Things in the Bible often have a deeper meaning. So while we are definitely seeing that parents should ask Christ to take care of their children, this speaks to all of us in another way. Father Dan once suggested that whenever we see a parent bringing a child to Christ for healing, we should think of ourselves bringing our soul to Christ for healing. Now, if you think about it, your soul yearns for God and it receives its life from God, but also your soul can be hurt. It can be unhealthy and struggling. Maybe your soul is sickly because you're not praying or because you're falling into temptations all the time. When a parent knows that her child is sick, she runs to the doctor and she runs to God. This father is desperate to help his son, and he is on his knees before Christ, asking him to heal this child before he dies in the fire or in the water. We should all be bringing our souls to Christ like this, asking him to heal us and to help us and to grant us life. The Gospel reading continues as Jesus says to the Father, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Isn't that an amazing thing to say? Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Does that even make sense? Can I believe and also not believe at the same time? Now, many people claim this line as one of their very favorite Bible verses, because while it sounds crazy, it's so true. We can believe in God and in Jesus, but there can also be a corner of our hearts where we're not completely sure. Faith is tricky like that. We can't really prove God. We have to take a leap of faith. This father is so honest with Jesus. He doesn't try to pretend that he's completely sure that Jesus is the Son of God. He tells the truth. The Gospel reading continues. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. This healing is hard. The boy falls to the ground, and the people think he looks dead. But here our Lord, the giver of life, reaches out and takes him by the hand and lifts him up. If our child is our soul, then this is showing us that when we bring our soul to God, even if it looks dead, Jesus will give it new life. This might remind you of Pascha. All those souls in Hades seemed to be dead, but they were just there waiting. And Jesus came in and he trampled down death by death. And in the icon, you can see him take them by the hand and lift them up. And upon those in the tombs, he is bestowing life. Jesus explains to the apostles that it takes prayer and fasting to be able to heal a person in this way. And doesn't it take prayer and fasting to heal our souls to give us life? Fasting helps us to gain control over our appetites. We control our appetite for food, but also all of our appetites for gossip or for power or for anything. As we gain self-control, we can better withstand those temptations like the ones that St. John faced on Mount Sinai. 
Like him, we fast and we pray. We speak to God. We train our hearts to run to him and to hear him. It takes prayer and fasting to heal our souls. So we need to be like this father on our knees, asking Christ to heal our souls and help our unbelief. St. John's Ladder is designed to teach monks how to live a holy, ascetic life, praying and fasting. But you don't have to be a monk to pray and fast and grow holier and closer to God. St. Porfirio said, A person can become a saint anywhere. He can become a saint in Ammonia Square if he wants. At your work, whatever it may be, you can become a saint through meekness, patience, and love. Make a new start every day with new resolution, with enthusiasm and love, prayer and silence, not with anxiety so that you get a pain in the chest. St. Porfirios, wounded by love. You don't have to be on the top of Mount Sinai like Moses and St. John in order to grow closer to God. You don't have to go to the desert to pray and to fast. We can become saints anywhere, even in Ammonia Square, the middle of the busiest, craziest part of the city. We can become saints even when we're all just right here in our homes. Holy St. John, Holy Prophet Moses, Holy Lord Jesus Christ, we believe. Help our unbelief. Give us the strength to pray and to fast and to become saints right here in our little corner of the earth. Here are some questions for you. St. John was tempted so much when he was living alone in the desert. How did he respond to the temptations and what happened? St. John responded to everything with prayer and fasting. Because of this, he grew very holy and soon the other monks saw it and they began to come to him for advice. Eventually, they asked him to write down what he had learned. The devil tried to destroy St. John with temptation and the man's child by throwing him into the fire. What was the best thing to do in both of these situations? What does that mean for us? For St. John and for the dad and his son, and for us as well, the answer is to turn to Christ. God is always waiting for humans to turn to him and to be saved from the dangerous things that the devil tries to do to us. Jesus explained that it took prayer and fasting to heal that boy. What's so important about prayer and fasting? Prayer and fasting work together to heal our souls. In prayer, we speak to God, running to him with our heart and hearing him. Fasting helps us to gain control over our appetites for food, gossip, power, or for anything else that it could hurt us or others. When we have more self-control, we can better withstand temptations, just like St. John faced those temptations that came to him on Mount Sinai. Now, here's something you can talk about together as a family. Elisa said that we don't have to be on top of Mount Sinai like Moses or St. John in order to grow closer to God. She said we don't even have to go to the desert to pray and fast. We can become saints anywhere, even the middle of a busy, crazy part of the city. Oh, maybe that sounds a little funny to us right now, because right now we are not in the crazy part of any city, are we? We're not at school. We're not even at church. Can we still become saints, even when we are all just here in our homes? Talk with your family about what temptations your family is experiencing right now. What is hard for each person right now that could tempt you to make bad choices? And then talk together about what you can each do right now in your home with your family that will help all of you to become saints. <music> <music>